Chapter 1. First, catch your dragon. Long ago, on the wild and windy Isle of Burke, a smallish Viking with a longish name stood up to his ankles in snow. Hiccup horrendous Haddock III, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, had been feeling slightly sick ever since he woke up that morning. Ten boys, including Hiccup, were hoping to become full members of the tribe by passing the Dragon Initiation Programme. They were standing on a bleak little beach at the bleakest spot on the whole bleak island. A heavy snow was falling. Pay attention, screamed Gobber, the belch, the, the, the soldier in charge of teaching initiation. This will be your first military operation and Hiccup will be commanding the team. Oh no, not Hiccup, groaned Dog's Breath the Durbrain and most of the other boys. You can't put Hiccup in charge, sir. He's useless. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, wiped his nose miserably on his sleeve. He sank a little deeper into the snow. Anybody would be better than Hiccup, sneered Snotface Snout Lout. Even fish legs would be better than Hiccup. Fishlegs had a squint that made him as blind as a jellyfish and an allergy to reptiles. Silence, roared Gobber the Belch. The next boy who speaks has limpets for lunch for the next three weeks. There was absolute silence immediately. Limpets are a bit like worms and a bit like snot and a lot less tasty than either. Hiccup will be in charge and that is an order, screamed Gobber, who didn't do noises quieter than screaming. He was a six and a half foot giant with a mad glint in his one working eye and a beard like exploding fireworks. Despite the freezing cold, he was wearing hairy shorts and a teeny weeny deer skin vest that showed off his lobster red skin and bulging muscles. He was holding a flaming torch in one gigantic fist. Hiccup will be leading you, although he is admittedly completely useless because Hiccup is the son of the chief. And that's the way things go with us Vikings. Where do you think you are, the Republic of Rome? Anyway, that's the last of your problems today. You are here to prove yourself as a Viking hero, and it is an ancient tradition of the hooligan tribe that you should. Gobber paused dramatically. First catch your dragon. Oh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccup. Our dragons are what set us apart, bellowed Gobber. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them, horses to carry them. It is only the Viking heroes who dare tame the wildest, most dangerous creatures on earth. Gobber spat solemnly into the snow. There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. The first and most dangerous part is a test of your courage and skill at burglary. If you wish to enter the hairy hooligan tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Gobber at full volume, I have brought you to this scenic spot. Take a look at Wild Dragon Cliff itself. The ten boys tipped their heads backwards. The cliff loomed dizzyingly high above them, black and sinister. In summer, you could barely even see the cliffs as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it snapping and biting and sending up a cacophony of noises that could be heard all over Burke. But in winter, the dragons were hibernating and the cliff fell silent, except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, Gobber said, do you notice those four caves about halfway up the cliff, grouped roughly in the shape of a skull? The boys nodded. Inside the cave, that would be on the right eye of the skull, is the dragon nursery, where at this very moment, 3,000 young dragons have their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitedly. Hiccup swallowed hard. He happened to know considerably more about dragons than anybody else there. Ever since he was a small boy, he'd been fascinated by the creatures. He'd spent hour after long hour dragon watching in secret. Dragon spotters were, con were thought to be geeks and nerds, hence the need for secrecy. 
and what Hiccup had learnt about dragons told him that walking into a cave with 3,000 dragons in it was an act of madness. No one else seemed too concerned, however. In a few minutes, I want you to take one of these baskets and start climbing the cliff, commanded Gobba the Belch. Once you're at the cave entrance, you are on your own. I'm too large to squeeze my way into the tunnels that lead to the dragon nursery. You will enter the cave quietly. And that means you too, Warsy Hog, unless you want to become the first spring meal for 3,000 hungry dragons. Ha ha ha! Gobba laughed heartily, heartily at his little joke, then continued. Dragons this size are normally fairly harmless to man, but in these numbers they will set upon you like piranhas. There'd be nothing left of even a fat so like you, Warty Hog, just a pile of bones and your helmet. Ha <laughs> ha! So you will walk quietly through the cave, and each boy will steal one sleeping dragon. Lift the dragon gently from the rock and place it in your basket. Any questions so far? Nobody had any questions. In the unlikely event that you do wake the dragons, and you would have to be idiotically stupid to do so, run like thunder for the entrance to the cave. Dragons do not like cold weather, and the snow will probably stop them in their tracks. Probably, thought Hiccup. Oh well, that's reassuring. I suggest that you spend a little time choosing your dragon. It's important to get one the correct size. This will be the dragon that hunts fish for you and pulls down deer for you. You will catch the dragon that will carry you into battle later on when you are much older and a warrior of the tribe. But nonetheless, you want an impressive animal. So a rough guide would be choose the biggest creature that will fit in your basket. Don't linger for too long in there. Linger, thought Hiccup, in a cave full of 3,000 sleeping dragons. I need not tell you, Gobba continued cheerfully, that if you return to this spot without a dragon, it is hardly worth coming back at all. Anybody who fails this task will be put into immediate exile. The hairy hooligan tribe has no use for failures, only the strong can belong. Unhappily, Hiccup looked around at the distant horizon, nothing but snow and sea as far as the eye could see. Exile didn't look too promising either. Right, said Gobba briskly. Each boy take a basket to put their dragon in and we'll get going. The boys rushed to get their baskets, chattering happily and excitedly. I'm going to get one of those monstrous nightmarish ones with the extra extendable claws. Oh, they're really scary, boasted Snoutlout. Oh, shut up, Snoutlout, you can't, said Speedy Fist. Only Hiccup can have a monstrous nightmare. You have to be the son of a chief. Hiccup's father was Stoic the Vast, the fearsome chief on, of the hairy hooligan tribe. Hiccup, sneered Snoutlout. If he's as useless as, as he is at Bashy Ball, we'll be lucky if he even gets one of the basic browns. The basic brown was the most common type of dragon, a serviceable beast, but without much glamour. The base... Oh. Shut up and get into line, you miserable tadpoles, yelled Gobba the Belch. The boys scrambled into their places, baskets on their backs, and stood to attention. Gobba walked along the line, lighting the torch that each boy held in front of him from the great flare in his hand. In half an hour's time, you will be a Viking warrior with your faithful serpent at your side, or breakfasting with Woden in Valhalla with dragon's teeth on your bottom, Gobba, screamed Gobba with horrible enthusiasm. Death or glory, yelled Gobba. Death or glory, yelled eight boys back at him fanatically. Death, thought Hiccups and Fishlegs, sadly. Gobba paused dramatically with a horn to his lips. I think this could possibly be the worst moment of my life so far, thought Hiccup to himself as he waited for the blast of the horn. And if they shout much louder, we're going to wake up those dragons before we even start. Pop! Gobber blew the horn. Okay, end of that chapter.